So, so okay, so then I think it it is this, um, oh okay. No, it isn't the same stupid, is it? So compatibility is indeed not because I can make this into an example. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, what, yeah. what you do, what you do is you put A B C okay. in a chain like this uh -huh. and add something in here to the zero of this guy. Right? So it should end uh -huh. up here. And then you add this guy to the zero of this guy, it should be the same as if you added the top guy to the zero of this guy. Something stupid yeah. like that. But you can just do some arithmetic. Oh, but it's not, no, it's not a sys, what are we talking about? That's, that, 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 that's, 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 that's a diagram. Yeah, that's is, how transitive Well, that means the diagram yeah. can use. Yeah. Okay, yeah, correct. Okay. So, it should be correct. I buy that. What does that one mean? <laughs> and, and by correct, I mean, <laughs> it also, it, satisfies it, all it does just do things that you get the result and you're like, what does that mean? It, 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 it doesn't accidentally, <laughs> like, it like means equate you, variables that shouldn't have been equated, for instance. So We're getting zero it, it, for it basically reason. boils down we should document the quirks properly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I think we're very I mean, short on the quirks. So. Correct yeah, and well specified. Sure. Yeah. So um, this is kind of a little bit more of the mechanics. So this is what goes on. In, and so we're kind of shifting away from how do you decide, how do you come up with this um, covering parent to how do you actually make this thing fast and what's really going on with the hood. So when you type a plus b, b it sees if they have the same parent. If they do, it instantly dispatches to the arithmetic. Otherwise, this bin op is a command that takes the operation you're trying to do, a and b. And here's the thing, is it looks up and sees if there's an action with this operation. So for instance, if this is q, this is Z adjoin X, the action here would be scalar multiplication. Rather than putting both of them into Q adjoin X and then multiplying as polynomials. So if there is an action, then it returns it Im immediately. Now division here is turned into the act, if there's an action by multiplication, then if you ask for the action by division, it returns the action by the inverse of the element under multiplication. Oh, I don't know. That's always the best way to do it. So if you write, so if terms, if you have um, A over B, and then it tries to do A times like that. If this is an action. But I don't, that's not always going to be the parent condition. If acts multiplicatively on the yeah. right. If the parent of B acts on the right by multiplication. Yeah, but I mean, in terms of implementation, if I want to divide a polynomial by 3, it's probably more efficient to divide it by 3, literally, coefficient by coefficient, than to construct 1 over 3, which is going to be, say, a rational number, and then, I mean, figure out a whole bunch of stuff. Like, I'd rather, I'd rather that, that scalar division could also be, uh, be scalar an division. atomic operation. You like can do that. Yeah. I'd like that to be available, too. Uh-huh. That is available, too. So the thing is, it, it will actually it'll do lookup action with division here. If that doesn't return anything, then oh, at sure. the end of that, yeah. it does lookup action with multiplication. And so that's, that's all inside the lookup action function. Yes, yeah. this is all inside sure. the lookup that's action function. So but the thing is, you don't you have just to make find a scalar division rather than multiplication. <laughs> I have trouble with this. So suppose you define some, uh, some objects where there are there are there is some multiplication, and then you also define some action, but the action is not by multiplication. Uh -huh. So maybe the order in which you do the operations uh, mean that you get different answers because in one I don't know depending on the coercions, uh, in one case you call multiplication and the other case you call action. Action always takes place. Hmm? Action. I mean, action yeah, always takes if, if there's an action, Ex if there's an action except action. if the if except if, if they have the same part. Oh, if so they, if they the two elements work, may, maybe they were they have been coerced before for some reason. They 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 they've been base extended. Okay, so you're saying you have some case where you have an element that wants to act on another element of the same ring. By non-multiplication, yeah. you need to ex you need to wrap it. That will be great. Yeah, you can so wrap. I'm, it. I, I that will, that will be confusing that. anyway. I'm actually claiming that that the, if 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 there's an action between two objects that that have a multiplication between them in some suitable extension, then the action should be compatible 
with this multiplication. Otherwise, you, you might get strange right. results. You can let a, a group act by conjugation on itself, and you can let it act by multiplication on itself. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but then you don't use you don't no, no. use the same then operator. You would probably no, no, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. ah. I'm, I'm not saying that you cannot define actions yeah, yeah, yeah. that are not multiplication, yeah. but you, you don't represent that with with an asterisk. No, well, no, no, no. You, <laughs> that's you, what I'm no, saying. You can if you want. Hmm? You can if you want. You, but what you have to do is you have to wrap the. You don't do it just with the group. What you do is you make a wrapper around the group. Make so you forget that it's a group. Yeah. 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 And you I've forget that the group is a group. Yeah. The wrapper is, is, is applying a forgetful yeah, yeah. factor. Mm -hmm. So, so then, then yeah. my objection is, is yeah. Yeah. does yeah. not apply. You have to yeah. yeah, so if you have an, if you have something that acts by multiplication and has multiplication that's not compatible, um, things might be confusing, but I would argue that they're going to be confusing anyway. That's 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 a design flaw. That's not a co coercion flaw. Yeah. If the coercion picks out the right thing, then coercion would be like solving a Turing problem. Because if I was looking at a paper, I don't know I could pick out the right thing. I mean, <laughs> what the, if they have the same thing, like as them in the parent, if there's an action, it does the action. I mean, it's very clear what's going to happen, yeah. right? And it's up to the people implementing actions and and. To make sure that they. The only case it wouldn't is this case. What if A has a left action by B and, or a right action by oh, B and B so has right a right left here, action by A? This asks A's parent that has an action on B and asks, asks B's parent that has an action on A. And uh, if both have an action? If both have an action, then. <laughs> they should, should be the same. By, should by the same reason. I think, I think left actions take precedence over right actions. Yeah. <clears throat> so, so this right here, this is new. The idea of being being able to make actions. Um, actions are defined automatically, like right multiplication, left multiplication on modules. Um, we'll return these things called. Well, let's give you some examples. So. Wait. The. Oh yeah. There's the action. Right. And I How do you get the lift? The lift? What's left action? How do you want the R get an action. And it gives you the right. Okay, say that again. So that's the right action. You don't need to get the action, right? R? That will return nothing. But, uh, Okay. Uh, is this, is this the same as QQ get action of R? No. Um, QQ get action of R for return no. 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 It, it says I don't know if there's any actions on it. No. Yeah. So that way you don't have to define it both ways. So. Um, <clears throat> and then um, if that fails, then what it does is it calls lookup coercion. And that goes through potentially this thing here and returns two maps, two morphisms. And then it calls morphism on A and morphism on B and then adds them. And one of these morphisms, actually, one of these morphisms might be none if you're going from the easy case, where one of them just courses into the other. The identity. identity. Well, you, you want it, to will be, it will be the identity, but for efficiency reasons, it's none. Yeah. And so then that's the entire sequence of events. So this, this caching, that, that happens via weak references then or something? Not yet. It needs to happen via weak yeah. references. Otherwise it blows up. Yeah. And the other issue is how do you cache something like an action? Because like, the thing about if you have this action object, it points to both parents. So now neither parent can disappear. Like, yeah. well, it's, you have to be really careful because 
it does have a way of picking up circular references, but just the fact that R exists, you don't want to make that force S to exist if you have two R and S that are in action. So and I haven't quite solved that problem yet. But um, definitely weak referencing needs to be added into this model. And it isn't there. So there's a so you have a course map from get action canonical course it takes two elements and returns those two elements in a um, common parent. So just is that how you spell it in Sage? Because probably um, <laughs> not. Okay. There's probably only one in there. Oh. <laughs> it's a cat. <laughs> <It's a cat. laughs> <laughs> there's a lot, of, a lot of problems with that name. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, <laughs> move on to the next slide. So this is the part that has been, hasn't been implemented yet. Um, David Rowe has started to implement this. And uh, so the, the idea is that users might want to be able to specify embeddings, especially with number fields. You might say, okay, I just want my number field to embed this way into this other number field. And so um, the problem is that having mutable parents um, can lead to all sorts of side effects. And so, um, and the Mutable parents have basically been outlawed in Sage. Like you make a polynomial ring, you can't just say, oh, I don't want the variable to be Y. Um, so <clears throat> the idea is to use contexts. So you can have a block of code that asserts additional embeddings. So you can say, like, with and then you do, like, uh, and say f is a function, then you do and it will use that function there. And if that gets used three levels deep? It will go up the tree. That's yeah. Yeah. And then if you do this. So f is a morphism, not a f function. is a morphism, yes. Yeah. And then but once this once you get out of the Swift block, that morphism is no longer in place. And that morphism would take preference over any other coercion it might be able to find. That is there was an argument about that. Uh, the conclusion, I think, was that you're not allowed to add an embedding that's already in the tree. It's already in the diagram. That this was no error if there was already a coercion between those things. And maybe there should be like a force equals. Because otherwise you can re-embed the integers into the rational system. Which people, I thought was fun, but people didn't seem to like. Yeah, so, so consensus last time was that this would throw an error um, if, if it duplicates. If it duplicated what could already be done. If there's another error there already. Yeah. Now, there is an idea of having force mm -hmm. equals true. Uh, there were a couple of points of view. Yeah. If you just really want, you know, well, it's, the model is going to be broken somewhere, right? Yeah. It's good to have a worker. So, so let me let me ask a sort of vague question. Uh -huh. right. Clearly, if, if f goes away after the width, I mean, if you can't coerce after the width embedding block, is there any way you could have like encoded? I mean, could you make inside your width embedding block? Make a function which uses f inside it somewhere and return that and use it outside and get something that shouldn't happen according to the coercion model that exists outside of the width embedding block that happened? I don't think so. Because. I mean, if I do a def inside there. If you do a def inside here. And, I and, then, do, and then you come out here. Yeah. Then that function that you define will work differently. Is the width a closure? Oh, okay. It's, 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 width, yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a context. Okay. But does it work like a closure? Right, yeah, that's exactly what I'm asking. As in does it, the local I mean, is, variables? Does def create a closure there, or does def create uh, something with dynamic scope? Def will create a closure, but this with embeddings is not an enclosure. They're not a closure. But if it uses. Oh, uh, no, you're saying I would have to this, explicitly this, use f in there. Yeah. If well, I just this right here is actually resetting some global variables. So that's. Not, that's yeah. I mean, if you just go off the. Of the closure. Well, sure, that makes sense. But I mean, I'm asking if there's a way I could trick it into making that happen. Yeah. Um, you mean like you want to escape this block? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yes, there is. Oh. Well, no, actually. <laughs> you need to edit it without Q. <laughs> actually, <laughs> <laughs> Because Python is dynamic, so it's not really a scope. Right. So right. there's there's actually yeah. no closure going on. Yeah, I don't think you do that. Yeah. I, I no, I mean, that's fine. It's something to worry about. Yeah. 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 Oops, I temporarily want to undo that with block that I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, actually, you, you, you about, could. I mean, it wouldn't be that hard. <laughs> no, 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 but actually, that, that's something that could make sense. Let's say you had this, this huge number of embeddings that you had, right? And yeah. you, you were going to do two huge amounts of computation with it, but in the middle you need to do something without it. And it actually takes a sizable amount of time to establish those embeddings. Right? You could need to like execute a piece of code. screwed anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I guess if your embeddings take long enough to encode in the course model, yeah. your code is probably stupid anyway. And, and once you've found it once, then it just looks it up in the dictionary every time. Oh, even if you throw it away? If you do it with oh. embeddings, I, I'm saying if that thing that you put in the embeddings, just it takes a while for it to figure out how to do stuff. And like in the process of doing that, you build a really intricate collection of information about the coercion model. Can I like save that context and restore it later? Oh, mm -hmm. I... I mean, can I, can I save it? an iterator. Hmm? <laughs> yes, you can. So embeddings returns a context object. You can just say instead of saying with embeddings, you can say C yeah. equals embeddings of T with yeah, C. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Get out of it. Do some other stuff. No, no, no. But with there's, there's more of a question there because the thing is that what I'm saying is, let's say in the with embeddings block, I cause it to I, like I do a lot of computation with this, you know some big chain of things, and it actually does all the work of the coercion model to figure out what that to C. But does it really get added to C? It should. It gets added to this thing. Yeah. So, you add the embedded, so the cache is embedded local to the embedding. So if you want to save that object, it's going to modify that. Wait, so you're saying if I do C equals embedding of T with C. C. Yes. Oh, it's going to start messing with C. Any, any, so C is side affected by the width C block? Yes. Yes. Okay. And then after, I mean, after the width block, it goes away. Uh -huh. But if I reestablish C, it's already got the same thing. With C, you're back in the same context. So in, in the sense that the cache for coercion is stored in the C, in C. Yes. yes. And then you restore the global yeah. cache yeah. size. Yes. Yeah. So we have width C equals embedding. So the implementation of width is just some what that little stuff. Yeah. What, yeah, what it is, it's actually. It's just an object with an enter and an exit method. Is just call C dot enter, C mm -hmm. dot exit. Yeah. And what it oh, does is okay. Python guarantees that it will call the exit. You can't get away with not calling it. Regardless of whether or not it's throwing an error, it's leaving it, it's, or whatever. C dot enter, C dot. So it's kind of like a try catch. Okay, so it's not a cluster. So hang on, so the stuff that actually uses the, like the coercion model, A plus, a plus B, uh -huh. has to look up a global variable or something? Yeah. Yeah. So the, a, the enter function for embedding sets a global variable. Uh -huh. Yes. This is another reason why Python will never be multi-threaded. Will it never be? Multi-threaded. Multi-threaded. <laughs> well, I mean, you could you could make it different. Like, you don't have to do global variable. You can set some variable okay. and number thread, thread, thread local variable, yeah. Um, you have to have something that's available to every arithmetic operation you do. Well, then, I, I don't understand why you, you couldn't do a you can just over, override the embeddings like you want to do. Like even if it's with C, and then you go um, explicitly set global variable to like new embeddings. You can, you can do that. You can, yes. you can do like a, a with, with overriding embeddings or something, you know? Yeah, so. You can do it if you want. So, you so can, so can do it. Can you have a funny name for that at stage four? With danger? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The idea of this is it gives the user a very easy way to mess with that global variable yep. that is safe. So that you could call this in some function, and if I call your function, I don't have to worry about my coercion model being messed up by the time it returns. And yeah, I mean, if the user wants to mess up the coercion model, they can like import element element dot. Yeah. That's just going to source anyway. Come on. <laughs> I mean, if your user's objective is to mess up the system, they're not going to have a hard time doing it. So <laughs> that's cool. That automatically adds into the coercion model. So this, this right here. Yeah. Yes, if the only problem is inits on rings don't go all the way up. People are like whoever wrote oh, yes. the rings are notoriously oh. bad at calling their parents init method. Mm. Um, so this doesn't work yet, but the idea is that 
It's okay, at least you did it on purpose. I thought it happened automatically. Yeah. This, well, it's, it's actually more complicated than you think because there is a lot of multiple inheritance that goes on. Yeah. And so the idea is do you want, like, you didn't have to be called yeah. five times because you multiplied inherited, like, all over the place. <laughs> so, but um, this is kind of the ideal way of, you add creation time, you can do this. There are, all, there are two other things you can put there, too. So this is the thing that David Rowe is writing right now. You can create a wrapper. So if you want to, you know, embedding of T into S or, or chord morphism, you can create a new ring that behaves exactly like um, this would return. It would return S. Right? S but with a uh, map from T into it. Yes. How is this different than? S, or then R equals. Uh, oh, that, that's oh. really, really dangerous then. No, because would... if you assert something that's not compatible with the default embedding from S to T, then now you have a graph of uh, coercion stats that's really not, I mean, but that, that's not identical in the loops anymore. But presumably R and S don't have a canonical coercion between them if you do this. I mean, the, the, ring that you create, the ring that you create is new. It it's doesn't new. have any other morphisms at all. No, but like it's, it's not connected. No, no, no. It's a new object. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not. Oh, the elements of it are wrapped in some so way. It's, yes. it's not It's not like the same S object as S. It is a different object. So for example, yeah. right now what I'm doing is I'm doing this for residue fields. So this is a residue field wraps G maps some finite field. Oh, but that means that but those it's a different object from a finite field. Right. So that but that means that you Yeah, okay, that's so, not so bad. Yeah. So there's yeah, a coercion from field. like if you have a residue field of, of some number field at some prime P, yeah, there's yeah. a map from that yeah, yeah. that number field down to the residue field. From the integers. Yeah. But there's not a map from GQ to GFQ to to that guys. Uh, right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and then you you no, use that together different. with those things if you really want to build a whole complex with extensions and compatible. Yeah. So you use the embedding thing there. Yeah. And so the idea is most of this probably the user wouldn't use it. It's just when you return an object. Yeah, yeah. It happens to be canonically isomorphic to you know the integers, the, yeah. a finite field, but it has extra structure. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's why I mean, by this construction, you're taking structure away too. Yes. Yes. Yeah. You're you're yeah. you're you're ignoring the fact yeah. that this is cannot, this is isomorphic to GFQ. Yeah. So actually, that is a but good question. But it abstracts GF. Yeah. I mean, does this does this thing then behave nice? Does it? It detect the same coercions that yes. it would have originally. The, the, this is going because if then you start. So I'm not sure how all this works with uh, with this whole system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, because you take an elliptic curve over Q, you take its reduction. So now you end up in a residue field, and elliptic curve over this residue field. But according to your construction, this would be a real funny field. And now you want to see how its points behave over extensions or something like that, for which you would really like it to be a normal final this field. Something like that. Oh, what is it? I, I could, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's a valid construction, but I, I can see that it will have very limited use. So what's a better way to do it? Because right now, like, I'm not going to stand there. I'm going to stand there. Check the code. I, well, I, well I, I, this I, is I, just it Within this so what, what chord model. Right? Oh, yeah. It's, 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 oh, yeah. So you really don't want to mutate the building. Building. <laughs> <laughs> It is. Are you serious? Well, it's talk still, man. Yes. I mean, if you're. I fucking hit the name a while ago, man. Two thirds done. Thank you very much. Yeah.